terms of nutritional supplements, um, what is it that you tell people? What do each of the four of you say? Are there certain ones that are absolute you have to take? Do you say don't take any? What is your basic um, answer to people when they say, what should I be doing in terms of nutritional supplement? What do each of the four of you normally say? I have, the, I categorize this as notable nutrients, which you could find out more about on my website on plantbaseddietitian.com. I have posts and videos about this, but we all, anyone on a plant-based diet needs to take B12. It's really, really important. I have all my clients supplementing with B12. Vitamin D has become an issue around the world, exclusive of what diet you're on. Um, and so vitamin D needs to be addressed, but it's not something that you could blindly supplement because it's a fat soluble nutrient versus B12, which is a water soluble nutrient. And then there's um, vitamin K2 is questionably potential for supplementing. And the two minerals are iodine and zinc on a plant-based diet. And then one needs to consider the omega-3 fatty acids, the long chain EPA and DHA and potentially supplement with those two. And there's reasons for all five of those plus the macro nutrient. But I have most of my clients just take a multivitamin to cover their basis and uh, not have to worry about it. I think one thing I tell my patients is <clears throat> it's recommended all Americans over the age of 50 take B12. It's not just a vegan diet thing. Uh, the absorption of B12 goes down over time in the gut. Everybody should be on it. And so that automatically is like, okay, fine. I need, I need B12 because they always will be like, oh, why is it that the vegan diet is so great? Why is it that you need all these, all these supplements? You get that, that question quite a bit and you could argue you know, many, many different points about it, but at least with the B12, we can, it's easy argument that, oh yeah, we wash our food now. And, um, and you know, where do you think that people eat animal-based foods, get their B12 from where most B12 supplements go to, they're given to the cows and the pigs and the chickens. That's where most B12 supplements go to anyways. But anyways, so the B12 thing definitely makes sense because um, it, it's, uh, it's, it can be a big deal if you become deficient. Vitamin D is only if your levels are low. And I still think that, um, it's, it's a challenge to tease out the data. Again, you got to give a good science, science-based recommendation. It's a challenge. The, the omega-3s is probably an important thing to supplement uh, the algae-based. Uh, is the science super strong and clear? Uh, it's not super solid, but I mean, it's not going to be harmful, honestly, uh, as far as we know, to supplement those omega-3s. Uh, definitely, if you're using the ground flax, and such, you should be fine. There are omega-3 indexes that you can order and see how you're doing in your blood work. Are they well validated? Do you know outcomes if you, you know, fix those abnormalities by supplementing that, that science, unfortunately, is very weak. And of course, the reason the science is weak is there's no money to be made in this stuff. So nobody funds a study. You can't patent, you know, these, these things for the most part. Um, and, and then, um, so that's pretty much where I stop. I say B12 for sure. The omega threes uh, probably should be a good a, a good idea. Vitamin D if your level's low, the K two thing and people are willing to try to do you know everything. I think it's also reasonable as well. There's some good data in cardiovascular disease and K two, but I think that one of the bigger things, bigger points that people just need to think about in general is just natural remedies and natural supplements are not regulated by the FDA. The science is frequently weak. The marketing claims are very very enticing, uh, but a majority of these weird extracts and concoctions that are out there are not, you should not be buying into that stuff. Don't be duped by the Gundries of the world uh, selling their electron <laughs> blockers and other things. Uh, really just, you know, the sim keep it simple. B12, vitamin D, omega-3s, K2, maybe iodine and zinc, and then just, that's it, that's it, no nothing else. Uh, okay, um, I got the, what I call the essentials and then the stuff if you want to. Um, and this is going to be kind of a lengthy explanation. So it's good that we have a couple of hours. Um, <laughs> all right. The essentials, B12. Why B12? All B12 is made by bacteria. Again, all B12 is made bacteria, by bacteria. No plant, no animal makes B12. And because we live in these artificial, plastic, steel, concrete environments we've created for ourselves, we have eliminated natural sources of B12 and we sterilize our water. We wash our food. So that's why we have to take the supplement has nothing to do with the diet uh, being deficient. It has to do with these concrete jungles we created and live in. So that's why we take the supplement uh, because we don't have access to natural sources, period. D3, 
I try never to call it vitamin D. Why? Because the only reason it's called vitamin D is because the dairy industry started dumping it into dairy products and they called it vitamin D to entice people into buying, to buying that swill that they were uh, uh, marketing to people. It is not a vitamin. It is a hormone we would all make if we were running around butt naked in the sun as God intended, but we're not. We are clothed, we live in these buildings, and even when we're outside, we're covered up. Um, so how much should we take? Well, there were actually studies that were done on uh, Bushmen in South Africa that showed that they made somewhere between 15 to 20,000 IUs a day. So I think the sweet spot for uh, us is about 5,000 IUs a day will uh, put us at a level that will give us enough to um, uh, um, uh, replete all of the immune cells in our body, um, uh, keep us from getting depressed, um, uh, help us have uh, uh, strong bones, and get us right where we need to be. So that's what I recommend to people. 5,000 I use every day with a meal. Um, I agree with the minerals, um, uh, iodine, and uh, occasional zinc, just because, again, um, because of the soils that we grow our, our, our food on, uh, uh, we don't get enough. Now, what about the, the, the optionals? Um, we, most of the plant foods that we eat are domesticated, meaning that we have selectively grown these plants for our parents. And, you know, it's like um, a person that you meet um, in college, and there's two people you see in class. One of them is really nerdy and studies all the time, and then one of them is either incredibly beautiful or really handsome, and that person spends a lot of time in the mirror or a lot of time in the gym. Well, you know, the person that's in the gym working out or in the mirror fixing their face all the time spends less time hitting the books. So the you know, they're going to look really good, but they're going to have less in their brain. Um, and if you're picking your plants based on appearance, they're putting all of their energy into growing big and looking pretty as opposed to manufacturing nutrients. And that's why when you compare cultivated plants to their wild relatives, they have somewhat lower uh, content of various nutrients and phytochemicals. So if somebody wants to take a multivitamin that has some extra, you know, carotenoids or something else in it to turbocharge what they're getting from their plants, I don't think it's a bad idea. Do I think it's absolutely necessary? Eh, no, but if they want to do it, I don't think it's a bad idea because I do think we have slightly bred out some of the nutrients from the, the, the foods that we eat, but that's why I say it's optional. Um, but the ones that are essential, B12, D3, good idea to do iodine and, and um, I guess zinc occasionally. Um, uh, and those are my recommendations. Thank you. Uh, chef AJ, you want to add anything on the supplements? Um, I agree with everyone. Everyone said as a chef, I can't really recommend people take supplements. So I refer them to people that are like the people on this panel. I personally take B12. And uh, that is recommended for all vegans, as far as I know. Okay. Um, in terms of um, uh, alcohol, one, coconut oil, two, fish oil, three, statins, four, what would you uh, like to say about those four things? Alcohol, one, coconut oil, two, fish oil, three, and stands for. Anyone want to offer feedback on those four topics? Can I jump in real quick? Because actually, I, I meant to say something about the um, uh, uh, omega threes, and, and since that segues into the fish oil, I want to say this before I forget it. Um, Jeff Palmer um, found a, a really brilliant article that uh, talked that actually showed that um, looking at people who are plant based. What, what this article showed was that it is that we don't really need 
to take in preformed long chain um, omega-3 fatty acids. Because if we have enough of the 18 carbon um, omega-3 fatty acids, our cells will elongate to the 20, 22 carbon uh, EPA, DHA as needed. And that there are uh, other pre, uh, um, uh, I, I'll get the article and, and share it with you. Uh, and that, that that's the better way to go rather than taking the already preformed versions that it, it um, the cells function better when they're allowed to elongate as needed, as opposed to giving them the preformed product. Um, and so, and that as long as we have enough of the 18 carbon, um, uh, uh, I always get the linoleic versus linolenic mixed up. So I just wanna say the 18 carbon uh, omega-3 uh, um, in our bodies. And as long as the cells are replete with that, they will, again, elongate that as needed. And, and provided we're also not taking in uh, too much um, um, omega-6 uh, um, uh, um, uh, um, extracted oils. Um, so that's, that's something I think we, we should focus on.